Reconnect and heal today. Welcome to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Welcome to Love Never Dies Radio. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf, and it is my pleasure to be with you again today. And look, it rhymes today for the awakened way. That's what we're talking about, whether you're ready to live the awakened way. And my guest today, Suzanne Giesman, is a messenger of hope and the founder and teacher of The Awakened Way, a path to knowing who you are and why you're here. She's a former U.S. Navy commander who served as a commanding officer and aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and today she provides stunning evidence of the existence of universal consciousness and our interconnectedness. She's the author of 12 books, and an inspirational way shower. She's been a keynote presenter for organizations including Ed, Edgar Casey's Association for Research and Enlightenment, the Academy for Spiritual and Consciousness Studies, the Afterlife Research and Education Institute, and the International Association for Near Death Studies. Suzanne's gift of evidential mediumship has been tested and proven. Her work has been recognized as highly credible by noted afterlife researchers and organizations. So without further ado, open your eyes and join me for the Awakened Way with my beloved Suzanne Giesman. Are you with me, Suzanne? Hi, Jamie. I sure am. It's a pleasure to be back with you again. Oh, gosh. I I just love being with you. You know, I was thinking this morning when I woke up and I looked at my wedding ring, one day, several years ago, you just called me and you just said, Jean wanted to speak to me. <laughs> and you just offered me this beautiful reading when I know you have huge waiting lists and so on. And the first thing you said to me was, Jean wants you to know he knows you're wearing his ring. <laughs> so I looked at the ring this morning and I, oh, nice. I thought of you and remembered that. So many beautiful moments happen in this work and it's just a blessing every moment. In fact, it was funny. I was sitting here just a moment ago just connecting with my team and spirit with my eyes closed, and I thought, I shouldn't have my eyes closed. And you said, open your eyes. And I said, I'm so bizarre that way. I know yesterday morning I'm talking on the phone with my former housekeeper, you know, who was with me for years in New York, and I just look at her and I said, are you about to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I mean, it was. She was. But the thing is, it's not even, it's just not even lofty or anything. It's the opposite of, you know, anything divine. But it just, yeah, yeah, but it just shows how it's all energy. It's all on the energy pipeline and we're picking it up. Everything's connected. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So talk about, please, how you came to the awakened way, which now you've, you've, trademarked as a service mark so how did this awakened how did you get awakened into the awakened way well i have been working with a woman who told me that you know the messages that i bring to the world need to reach more people and we've been trying to focus in what is the message and i realized that it boils down to three basic truths and so I thought that it would be great to just give it a name. There are other thought leaders in the world who, I don't want to say package because that sounds commercial, but it has been a way for me to focus on what's truly important. What is the main message that I can share with people to help them find their pathway through this life? And it's been tremendous for me to be able to say, what are the three basic truths of the awakened way? And so that everything I do now, my teaching, my workshops, interviews, all I have to do is focus on those three principles and everything flows from there. So I've had the honor of being on your show a couple of times. And each time we talk about uh, the work and connecting with higher reality and mediumship and all of the many aspects of my work, but the awakened way is a is a path to a love centered life. It has specific steps, processes, and a philosophy. Yet it's not rigid or dogmatic. It applies to all of us. Right? It's not like a formal religion. It is no, not just at all. the awakened way is spiritual. It's not a organized religious method or anything like that it's it's a conscious committed way of living up to our soul's full potential 
I love and that. Anybody, and you know what's so interesting? Anybody does that. <laughs> you, I, I don't know if you're aware of this. I said this to you before. When you do readings, your voice changes. The way you enunciate is different. Oh, yes. And you and I were talking a bit before we actually went live. And as soon as we went live, I started to hear the way you're talking, the cadence of your voice is different. So what oh, yes. I realized is you're already in spirit. The minute you started the interview, you just switched to that higher vibration. And now I am hearing the vibration in your voice of all your angels and your uh-huh. guides speaking through you. Jamie, the thing that we can all come to know is that we can't be separated from that higher consciousness. But when we integrate our awareness consciously with that higher state, that's when you notice the shift in my cadence and voice. But it also leads to greater insights coming through us rather than just the normal chit-chat of a pleasant conversation. So it's really cool that you noticed it. Yeah, I noticed. And you know what's so (laughs) neat, too, is you know how Jean said to me right after he left his body, death is an illusion. There's a very thin veil between the realm where you are and the realm where I am. The veil is thinner than you can ever imagine. I'm standing right here. And this is what led me to understand that we're not supposed to be separated from heaven or the afterlife or the dark matter, that it's literally all around us and that we're supposed to be living Heaven now, one foot on the earth plane and one foot in spirit or heaven or the dark matter, whatever you want to call it. And we can follow your awakened way and live heaven now. This is what we're all being asked to do. That is the first principle of this awakened way. It's that everybody listening, all of us, you are a beautiful soul, an eternal being who walks in both worlds at once. So... That understanding is exactly what you were saying, that we are both human and spirit. We have one foot in both worlds all the time. It gives us that access to greater awareness, to the peace that so many people find elusive. It's true because when you are connected with spirit, there's a tremendous peace when I help people reconnect to their loved ones in spirit. The initial shift in their feeling is oh my gosh i was crying i was bereft i was empty sad angry and now i feel peace exactly that's the ultimate goal that's our true nature and and it's not a matter of changing our thoughts of changing our attitude of changing anything other than our focus and the focus goes from an outward focus to the the world around us to an inward focus to the state of awareness that never changes within us that peace That's our connection to the soul. You know, what I'm also picking up about you, and I I actually felt like I was about to weep, Suzanne, Mm -hmm. because what I feel is that you you literally are a tuning fork. And that as you speak, I was almost listening and feeling the vibration of your voice, and it was making me start to cry. So many people say that, Jamie, and what I have come to know is what, why that, desire to cry that's where that feeling comes from is it it, the vibration ignites the soul and the soul says yes you know this feeling here i am yes yes and that is why you know i we had some issues where your your show prep didn't come through and and Mm -hmm. and what did i say to you we don't need it because there are no show preps in heaven you know (laughs) yes and here it is And it's even like I'm feeling the vibration of your soul and the vibration of love. And I noticed I was sort of like drifting off into, well, even the words don't matter so much. It's a vibration. In the spirit world, they don't speak in words. It's all vibration. And that's why when I do a reading, if, if the person never spoke English, it doesn't matter. It comes through this brain and this body as a vibration, and then the brain translates that into English words that I would understand, but everything ultimately is that one vibration. Isn't that amazing? Because remember in Love Never Dies, I was talking about some examples. I was doing this, these experiments with Jean of energetic communication, not realizing that I was sort of 
getting my training wheels for how I was going to energetically communicate with him when he was in spirit. Uh And when we were in France and we came upon a brace of ducks, and I said, well, you know, when I talk to animals, domestic and wild, I'll always ask them, open your mouth once to say hi, or open it once to say yes, that you understand me. And so here we were in front of this large brace of ducks and I said listen you guys if you understand all of you open your bills once and say yes and all at once they did and Jean just looked at me and he said that's brain to brain energetic communication (laughs) so he was sitting here with my two puppies nearby and they definitely we communicate brain to brain or soul to soul really I would I would yes soul to soul Mm-hmm. Right, at that moment he was still on the earth plane, so somehow he was using more of an earthly term, you know, it's brain to brain, but it really is soul to soul, isn't it? Yeah. It yeah really and that's, is. This is what we we need to understand, that, that there is only the soul having this experience in the human form. And when we get that understanding, then it, it just makes everything here, all of the drama takes on a new light and and yeah. it doesn't matter what's going on around us we can still access that peace within us it's been tremendously helpful for me personally and to share that with others and, and show them that we don't have to get tossed around by these waves all the time it's a blessing so it's interesting because as you were saying the drama takes on a new light I was hearing well the light of spirit shines light on the drama so that is the new light it, you know that your drama just dissipates because in the light of love and spirit the dramas are gone they just they don't even exist exactly we get yeah. this, the, the the thing that I try to teach people is that our peace depends on our point of view And we get to choose the point of view at any time. Is our point of view from the limited, separate self, who so many people think is the only self, or is our point of view from higher consciousness, which is connected to all that is? That's the the second principle of this awakened way that that is helping me to share in a more concise and clear way, is that you are part of one big web connecting all that is. And once you become aware of that, you see it constantly jamie you're one of the best ever at seeing the web but when you open people's Mm. eyes to look for those connections then life becomes magical and fun (laughs) it's Uh like every day is like a treasure hunt (laughs) yes except you don't have to you're like a kid on a treasure lap yes don't you find that these these magical moments that aren't magical at all but magical is what we the name that we give to something that that's wondrous so these wondrous moments just happen, and, and exactly when you can have that childlike glee at, at acknowledging these moments and our connection to all that is, the soul rejoices yeah. in that. Yeah, and when you said that, I mean, I was just I was so moved when you said, "Oh, I'm the," I don't even remember what you said. Something like, "I'm the master at seeing," you know, the web, you know, yeah. how everything is connected and seeing those synchronicities. I think I, because I so want to live in love, so my eyes are sort of open like a little girl um, saying, oh, show me, show me, because I think it's because, Suzanne, of how I began my life. It was so empty, you know, and with such abuse that for me it was either go mad, go insane, or just be like an, a naive child just being an open open book. Just show me give, me, give me a gift today, and I'm open to any gift because I was sort of just empty, you know, (laughs) to be filled, you know? Yes, exactly. But that was that point of view of the limited self, feeling empty. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the minute you say, well, that's just your story, that's the earth story, and that even the story is part of the awakened way because you have to be in some way aware of the story so that you can get past the story to awaken beyond it. Mm Mm-hmm, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, when you just used the word empty there, that just rang a little bell in my mind. That one mm-hmm. thing that's beautiful about this this teaching that I love sharing is that m- many religions and philosophies talk about if you're going to do away with the story, you go back to this state of emptiness. And for many people who felt empty 
in their human story, that's a scary mm. thing. Why do I want to go to a place of emptiness? And mm. I like people to see this a different way because within that what may appear to be emptiness is the full potential of anything that can arise. And that fullness is that's the sea of love from which we all arise. So rather than seeing that, that we dissolve into emptiness, 